Hey there folks, thank you so much for coming back to my channel because today I'm gonna to show you a ridiculously quick workflow. It's actually studio watch photography. And we're gonna go through how to photograph watches um, in this sort of casual style. Like it's not symmetrical, uh, melt your face off catalog work that looks so gorgeous with diffusers. We actually just kept this super simple with speed lights and a kit lens. So, I mean, what can you say about this? It's masculine, it's nice and sparkly, it's sharp. And I think it might catch your eye in an Instagram feed. Now, I'm just gonna hit this with the strip box. And you know, that's a approach I would take if I was shooting this watch. I would just put the strip box down because it's such a manageable rectangular shape and just fire off an exposure and see how the item's playing off the light. Pretty good. So we're trying to focus on the brand name there and we'll talk about aperture in a bit, but we catch in, we catch in. We're catching a bit of light, a bit of sparkle and certain areas are dark, but certain sort of look nice and almost caramely. I can't even describe it. It's just this nice thing that happens on the surfaces of watches. Now, the first thing I'm gonna do, and if you've been on my channel a few times, you'll have seen this, is bring in the black background. But I'm gonna make sure it's facing at an angle perpendicular from our strip box. That way it won't catch any light. Okay, and Wow, so we just get a black in camera, which is obviously something we want to do. I'll probably adjust that over a tiny bit. Um, but I'm pretty sure we're crushing to absolute black there. I don't have a histogram open, but I'll just move it over a hair. And now we're creating a bit of a canvas, which is a recurring theme on workflow, I think, to sort of paint light onto. So once again, things are looking cool. Uh, where we set down the strip box, it just seemed to work, but sometimes that just happens with watches. They're really gorgeous by design. And you know, you can be motivated in where you place the light, but I'm happy with the sort of shapes that are happening in the specular um, on the face. And I definitely like the sparkles on the strap there. So a quick and easy way to introduce more light, and this comes up in about half the episodes on Workflow, is bring in a reflector. And that's something I'm gonna do because before I bring in a second light, I really wanna milk this light. I want everything I can from it. So why don't we bring up the previous image actually? And as this shoots off, we'll see the difference. It's nice seeing it live. And there we go. And we can reposition that a little bit. Like, you know, at first glance, it looks really beautiful. I notice over here on the left, maybe it could use, um, the light could be, you know, backed up because we don't make it all the way to the sort of corner there. And I want it to be defined on the black surface at the end. Now I should address this little foggy, uh, weird mess that's going on in the bottom of the reflection. You know, I'm not exactly sure what that's from. It may be my scuffed plexi, more likely than not. Um, but you know, I'll probably end up fading out the reflection in post. So we really don't gotta worry about that too, too much. So just to adjust this light here. And I just moved, not light reflector, I just moved it back a little bit. So hopefully I can catch the watch all the way to the edge. And it still looks a hair off, so I'm gonna try to pivot it. And you know, sometimes I will carry things in the studio. Like you may catch me carrying a reflector or something to move light. But at the end of the day, you want to keep things static because it's by micro adjusting that we're able to unlock um, a lot of power in the studio. So yeah, if we zoom into the edge here, you know, there's a bit of tweaking to make that work, rearranging our light stands. But we see now we have a pretty hard, decently hard to F13 edge. So that'll be nice. Uh, you want the edges of your product to be sharp. Now, this is just an introductory look at this kind of stuff. We're not really going into focus stacking, which is when you're going to sort of have a range of focuses that you're going to mass together. Maybe we'll touch on it at the end, but it is pretty introductory. So check out what we have so far. The next thing I want to do is brighten up the far side because, you know, it's sparkling, but I want to have a more general fill light. So what I'm going to do, I just realized you can't really see me from that view. I need to turn that power up a bit, but all I'm doing is I'm using this little diffusion disc and guys, I'm linking my products in the description. So feel free to check out my products. Well, not my products, the stuff I use. And you know, I just shoot this through it. So I'm creating a bit of a portable soft box that I'll use to unlock a bit of light. So we see this with the before after, I don't know, maybe we should turn up the power a bit. So now we're going to 164th power and forgive me for being sort of hidden behind my lighting setup here. Okay, that looks really nice. So now it looks so much more balanced. We still have sparkle in there, but a more general fill. 
Okay, now I'm just gonna do a little perimeter around the camera, fire off a few exposures, just having fun with the flash, really, and shooting at this diffuser. And the reflection got degraded there, but sometimes, you know, you'll just catch the watch at a certain angle. And we can try to position certain lights, like we can try to put it above. And then, you know, later when you're sitting in front of the big computer screen and it's really comfortable, you can see each micro adjustment that's been made. Now over here, I'm just doing one more softbox exposure from this side. Now something I'm also gonna do is ditch the diffusion panel, and I'm just gonna use the speed light to sort of put it next to the watch and try to get a cool sort of glisten on the face of the watch. So let me show you what I mean. Now some of you, that introduced some nice light for sure. Some of you may just say, you know, why don't you just set all your lights up perfectly so you get it done in one shot? I know there's a lot of photography purists who will say that. In reality, you're gonna end up with one exposure and it is your base shot. It's pretty much perfect. You're just giving yourself some breathing room to comp in maybe some additional stuff that's gonna look really good. So here's my final shot, for instance, and all it was was, you know, taking that base shot and bringing in some extra info and you know a few simple masks and there's plenty of tutorials online for how to use masks so you can check out some of my other tutorials but it's really just like a 60 second maybe five minute the most edit because we are you know on pure black catalog so we can be pretty sloppy with our masking which i certainly enjoy i didn't actually use any focus stacking for this uh, you could th cycle through focuses if you want but i kept it pretty introductory and simple today so guys i hope you have a really beautiful day and i'll see you next time here at workflow take care mm -hmm.